welcome to the Nerdstalker Tech Week update podcast here. I am Adolfo Fronda at Nerdstalker on Twitter. And I'm Greg Vori, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter. And uh, anyway, I think it's podcast number 30, my friend. Number we 30. Hit another milestone. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And what a fun uh, month it's been sort of for us, right? I mean, we did, we covered the Maker Fair. Maybe some of you people out there oh, have been you know, listening or seeing some of our updates. Uh, we still have yes. a ton of video that we need to, uh, an audio that we need to release here. Uh, a lot of editing work to be done. And so why not add to the yes. pile by doing this podcast as well, huh, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're, hey, we got all day. It's Memorial Day weekend, right? <laughs> we're not doing anything. Right. Anyway, uh, hey, um, I saw a bunch of your tweets, though, this week. You've been very Same. active, even though you had all that video and audio uh, <laughs> yeah. editing work to do. Yeah. And uh, great post, by the way. Um, Facebook is yep. billing that Facebook phone right in front of our eyes, right? Let's talk about the Facebook phone. I, yeah. I, I'm curious. So I really dig this writer. His name is uh, Jay Yarrow from Biz Business Insider. Thanks so much. Yeah. So what he states is that it's been reportedly, uh, f you know, Facebook has been reportedly working on a mobile OS uh, for its own phone since 2010, actually. Uh, apparently, the original operating system was shelved. Uh, then a new team came in and worked on it again. So uh, this week, it's rolled out its Facebook camera, as um, you know we know. And every smartphone needs a, a camera app, right? So uh, Facebook's camera app, which has some filters and loads straight to Facebook, would uh, check that box. Uh, it, it's also, obviously, they also own Instagram, which is not a bad photo app unto itself, right? So uh, we wonder what's going to happen there. Not. Uh, it has a uh, Facebook Messages application. This would be Facebook's answer to, to BBM, iMessage, and, or even text messages. Um, this is in interesting, too, because I have to admit, you know, I've tried other uh, messaging applications on my Android. And oddly enough, mm. the most people that ping me are always on Facebook Messenger. And I've tried like hell not to install it, but... Um, I, I'm getting so so many requests for you know within Facebook Messenger that I I think I'm going to end up installing this thing. Uh, anyway, so Facebook also has its own App Store. Uh, this would be its answer to the App Store, you know, Google uh, iOS App Store or Google Play. And it's reportedly interested in buying Opera. Uh, if it's going oh, to have yeah. a mobile operating system, it's going to need a web browser, right? Apple has Safari, Google has Chrome, Amazon has Silk, and Microsoft has an Internet Explorer. Uh, other core apps like Contacts and Calendar are already baked into Facebook. Uh, the only biggie that's missing is Maps. Uh, Facebook is, is close with Microsoft, like this, pretty much. Uh, so it could possibly get a Bing-based uh, mapping app, which uh, would not surprise anyone. So, um there you go. That's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, well, let's talk about the phone. I mean, what what, what does the phone bring them? You feel? I, I I'm I'm trying to figure this one out. I, I mean, integration. We we could put apps on our iPhone and Android. So, what? What, yeah, I mean, I feel, you know, someone else kind of nailed it. I saw another story recently that said uh, the title was, uh, if Facebook uh, uh, releases a mobile phone, uh, investors should run like hell away from the stock. <laughs> and I sort of I sort of feel the same way. Um, it's it's almost feeling, you know, and uh, I've heard Scoble say over and over, just wait until they get mobile, mobile going, mobile going and all this stuff, you know. But, uh, I, I mean, we've been hearing the same thing about Microsoft, right? And um, mm. they've only got a sliver of market share. Look what's happening to all the other, uh, you know, RIM and, and, and some other companies now. Granted, maybe they, they are not humming like uh, Facebook, but Facebook isn't a hardware manufacturer, right? They, they've never been into this space. And, I mean, they're an advertising company, really, more so than anything, it seems like. Uh, so uh, this is a completely different, you know, this is a paradigm shift, for lack of better sort of phrasing here, uh, for, for Facebook. And it's a big, big risk, but um, uh, risk isn't new to this company, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess diversifying away from their social is maybe their play, so they could be another Google, uh, Microsoft, or Apple. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only thing I could think of. Um, I didn't get a chance to really read a lot of their investment docs, but mm -hmm. um, investor docs. But you know that probably is the play here. Um, you know, uh, we'll talk about later about um, another uh, monetization worry for Facebook. But um, okay, uh, no, yeah. that. that that so Greg, yeah. how about more uh, more Facebook? Huh? Today this seems yeah, to be the well, Facebook episode, Facebook. right? <laughs> this so, is Facebook episode. <laughs> so Greg, the Facebook issue no one wants to discuss. What is it? Yes. Well, this is from Social Steve, uh, aka Social Goldner, uh, 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 senior director for social media for MediaWiz, uh, and uh, I follow him a lot, and, and I and we talk on uh, Twitter a little bit about some of his um, you know comments about you know some of the social media going on. So. You know, that same week, uh, GM announced it pulled its 
a $10 million Facebook ad account, uh, campaign account from Facebook, right? Right, right that same week mm. for the IPO, right? Mm -hmm. And that was kind of you know, crazy. And everyone was saying, well, what, you know, man, you know, the IPO is doomed now. You know, there's no way that someone's going to, they would be able to monetize if a big account like GM pulls out. Well, mm. I think what he pointed out in his article really was that, you know, social media like Facebook is just, an element of your marketing strategy, right? It's really the overall marketing ROI that really counts. Right. And mm -hmm. for each product, it's different, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, GM sells cars. Maybe, maybe possibly for their Chevy Volt, Facebook ads is better because it it appeals to a more younger demographic as opposed to some of their older cars, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think that what he was trying to say really, it, it, it's really uh, understanding how you convert these clicks and all these things into sales is really the is the ROI you care right. about whether you use Facebook or not it doesn't really matter yeah. it, it, you know it's really your problem as as the product to try to figure that out but you know on on the flip side you know Facebook um, I I don't really believe uh, Facebook is putting all their eggs in the ad basket um, as you and I have talked about a lot you know these banner ads I think we're all ignoring them. Uh, you know, yeah. if you think about it, it, it's a, it's always turned into this conversion of two percent, right? So if you get a hundred thousand, you get two thousand converts, you know. Right, right. <laughs> and so we're always so we're trained now to do this viral marketing mechanism to get our two percent, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's just the, it's just the funny way of thinking, I, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I, I think we can't go down that road anymore. Mm -hmm. I think it has to be more of a thought out campaign that you get more qualified. Um, clicks and then with the qualified clicks you get a higher conversion you know mm -hmm. that type of thing but but i i i yeah. I, I don't think facebook is putting all their money into ads now i i talked with one guy who commented on my tweet about this is that it's better to put it into our uh integrated into our uh, timeline news feed actually mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. like twitter does with the promoted feeds that actually makes more sense to me yeah. um mm -hmm. You know, if we, they could figure out who you are in the demographic, just put it into your your newsfeed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I know that's kind of stupid for me to say that because I don't want to see any more crap on my newsfeed, but that's really where I think they need to go. Mm -hmm. Adam Curry yeah, actually uh, had that statement uh, before that it it feels like AOL all over again, right? Sort of this walled garden, sort of uh, we're going to make oh. money on advertising approach again. And I, honestly, I'm not hearing anything different from Facebook. I'm hearing, okay, we're losing money on mobile because we need to. We don't have any as many ads in mobile. We don't know how to integrate mm. in, in mobile mm. as well. Um, and it all sounds like advertising, advertising, advertising. You know, I, I hate it when people compare Apple to, to Facebook in any way because Apple has a tangible, uh, tangible product that they actually sell yeah. in a store that right. you buy. Uh, when you go to Facebook, you're buying nothing, right? I mean, it's free to sign up. Uh, so you know, as they all say, you are the product, right? So of course, it's if that's the case uh, for advertisers, it's an it's an advertising company. How it differs from Google uh, is uh, currently they don't provide search really worth a damn. Um, but what they do provide, you know, is your social network and stuff. But again, it's just an advertising play. So um, it's I, it seems like the same uh uh offering in a different sort of package you know um right and right. until we see different product like like they were saying maybe a facebook phone or, or something like that where they might get some sort of licensing dollars you know i think they seem to have some other sort of ancillary sort of things that that i don't hear a bulk of people talking about like facebook bucks you know facebook money and you know this virtual currency stuff um uh, i'd like to i you know as an investor or a an interested investor i'd like to see what else they have to offer besides advertising okay yeah interesting so pandora um soars after yeah. the estimates so hey man uh this next story uh facebook beefs up mobile photo sharing with camera talk to us well yeah yeah thanks to pc world on that uh, but it's been co covered all week here the uh, facebook just announced this week uh facebook camera uh it's an app on uh, uh iphone only right now and uh you know, it's it's a photo sharing app. So now you know why Instagram is so important to Facebook right, now, right? right? <laughs> so so apparently they took about only a year to develop this, and wow. now they they bought Instagram for a billion dollars. So Jeez. it's uh, you know, they put a lot of investment in there. They're they're serious about mobile, I guess. Um, so you know, the app includes the 15 kinds of filters, uh, you know, popularized by Instagram. You know, um. 
Yeah, the camera also supports cropping and rotating images, just like any other sharing app that you and I have ever used in our lives. So, you know, nothing uh, world-beating. It just allows you to get those pictures onto your Facebook a little more cleanly and easy. So, um, I saw on uh, Twitter this week, uh, you know, there's a bunch of people talking about this. Uh, you, you tweeted it out, uh, how Tim Cook is changing Apple um, via you know, Fortune magazine. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, thanks to one of my favorite uh, probably financial tech kind of writers or financial writers i should say adam lashinsky uh out of san francisco mm -hmm. here and yeah as he said for yeah so um his take is like uh on on the new reign if you will of of tim cook sort of here initial sort of mm. uh, overview here and uh one of the you know he's got several interesting stories one of them is when um typically in the past when jobs jobs didn't have much of a, a regard for these like wall street investors and analysts that would come into to apple and basically take up his time and he he usually wouldn't even enter the room or anything he, and he wouldn't welcome them like lavishly like other companies typically do when they do these type of updates mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but this experience was different lashinsky says you know in that uh, uh tim cook actually came into the room uh 20 minutes uh into the talk which uh, oppenheimer was there uh, talking, who who's part of Apple now, uh, and he quietly sat back in the room and he did something really odd. He just listened. He didn't check his email once. He's saying, and uh, he didn't interrupt. And um, so that's what's sort of remarkable is that uh, Steve Jobs wouldn't have bothered, right? And then not only that, later he went in and he f actually fielded questions, which is totally like unprecedented, right? And he talked about oh, wow. a, a lot of different things. And um, this, this goes to show, you know, uh, this different direction that he's taken. Uh, so not only that, um, he he really uh, felt like personally uh, uh, an attack, uh, attacked by the New York Times when they did the Foxconn sort of story, right? And they, sort mm, of, sure. they focused in on Apple, although every freaking giant company manufactures their stuff out of, out of Foxconn as well as many other oh, places course, in China. Yeah. And what he actually did is he went to Foxconn and he allowed himself to be photographed there, right? And they actually joined a uh, uh, some sort of group. Uh, I forget what the group's called. Uh, the Fair Labor Association Industry uh, Third Party Monitoring mm. Group uh, to, and visit factories independently. And they joined the group, although they've been talked to uh, join the group. But they were talked to join the group for over a year. But uh, this is yes, another yeah. thing Steve Jobs would have never done, right? So this is uh, like a PR mm. kind of move as well. And uh, it, it's very... Uh, uh, you know, very smart, actually, I think. Um, so, uh, and another sort of uh, new paradigm shift within the company, too, and of, or philosophy mm -hmm. sort of that Tim Cook brings mm -hmm. along with him is uh, uh, very telling here where a former engineering vice president who worked at Apple for 14 years until late 2011 said, quote, I've been told that any meeting of significance is now always populated by project management and global supply management, unquote. He says, quote, when I was there, engineering decided that we wanted uh, what we wanted, and it was the job of product management and supply management to get it done. It shows yeah. a shift in priority, unquote. So like whereas engineering and designers pretty much ran the show at Apple prior to Cook, uh, the tables have kind of been a little, there's a few more chairs at the table here, right, for input. Um, and not only that, it's, it's much more sort of, he's kind of humanized it more where G jobs would only eat in the cafeteria, typically only with Johnny Ives, right? in a one-on-one -on -one thing. Now, you'll see Tim Cook, and, he, you know, it's little things, but he'll eat with random people, random Apple employees, you know, in, yeah. in the cafeteria. Um, so very interesting, you know, uh, how things are sort of changing at Apple, and uh, from what I'm hearing is employees uh, l like it. Most of yeah, no, no, I, I think, you know, I worked in a very big company, and when they had a change in power like that, you, you'd see... Just little things change because of the person's background. Um, you know, I think with Tim Cook being more of an operations guy, he really kind of understood the kind of a balance between engineering and operations, you know. And I, I came from an engineering-centric company, and we used to just shove things down the operation guy's throats. And I was in product management, and, and I, I don't be picking up all these things coming off the cart because, right. you know, they right. just made that decision and right. said, how are we going to get that done? I, they go to me and say, I don't know. We'll just right. have to go figure it out, right. Right. you know. So and Given that Cook I, was, I, was a, is a global global supply management genius, right? I mean, he's the one yeah. who effectively optimized the whole manufacturing process globally, which means a lot of spinning plates uh, and managing the process for the release of these devices and keeping them as secretive as they are. Um, uh, you know, th that's his influence, right? And his interest. So maybe he's inserting some of himself into this, you know. 
Yeah, I, and it's not, it's not a bad thing what he's doing. I mean, to to really kind of go down to the ranks and kind of you know mingle with them and and you know being who he is. You know, if he's just true to himself, he isn't Steve Jobs like everyone's trying to try to say. You know, you'll never be Steve Jobs, and he, I think he knows that. Yeah. And so he's just trying to be himself. Yeah, so, yeah. Which is and good, Steve Jobs you know? told him to be himself. He said, you know, yeah, don't ever don't ever do anything that you you know if they, if they say what Steve would have done this and that. So. Yeah. Right. So, right. so Greg, Amazon warns uh, yes. protesters stay off Seattle campus. What's going on here? Pepper spraying? Baton? Well, there's yeah, there's a <laughs> there's a deeper story than just that. You okay. know, <laughs> you know, they just don't want dogs around there or something like that. No. It, so, so from GeekWire, uh, uh, thanks to Todd Bishop uh, on this. Uh, you know, kind of saw the tweet coming out of GeekWire. Uh, you know. The Seattle headquarters campus has been a target of protests in recent weeks uh, from a group called the Working Washington that's calling the on the company to pay more in taxes, improve working conditions, and actually there's a there's a third thing is affiliation with Alec, a online re, uh, you know uh, American Legislative Exchange Council, and so uh, this last week they had a uh, stockholders meeting, and um, uh, you know, they're trying to turn this little public area. You know, the land that uh, Amazon um, is on uh, was supported, uh, was actually public land given by um, Seattle to allow them to build this campus on there. And so a lot uh-huh. of people said, well, geez, you know, this is this was public land to begin with, you oh, know, wow. and it was just given by the development agency uh, to, to for, uh, uh, you know, Amazon to come in there. And I'm sure they gave a good deal to them. And And so I think that, you know, they wanted to kind of protest there just to kind of, uh, you know, get in front of the stockholders meeting on, uh, I think, last Thursday. And, and it actually worked. Um, you know, their affiliation with this American Legislative Exchange Council, which, you know, actually it's a right wing policy group that has worked oh. to suppress the black vote, <laughs> attack workers and the environment. I Yikes. mean, totally anti everything. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I'm still <laughs> trying to figure out how does a corporation like that even go there? You know, I, I'm still trying to figure that out. But, you know, mm-hmm. that, that isn't part of this podcast thing. But it's just kind of like it's one of those you got to be kidding, you know, hashtags. Yeah. Right. You know, um, so, you know. Working conditions at fulfillment centers, you know, I think they brought up all the several issues where, you know, it's a sweatshop, so, you know, add, add more air conditioning there. Um, you know, the affiliation with Alec made a lot of sense. And then the third thing, pay more corporate taxes. Um, interesting, a report, you know, I think by um, Huffington Post in April, uh, you know, kind of called out um, – all the big companies, you know, Apple, Google, and stuff like that, and and I think Amazon was at the bottom of the list of the of paying the least amount of taxes. Like uh, Apple was like uh, at around you know 10 percent, Google was at around 12, <laughs> um, Amazon was at 3.5 percent. Can you believe that? B round. Oh man, that sounds good. What do you have first up? The security. So first, uh, yeah. So yeah. So what? Uh, breaking story here. Uh, pretty much. Uh, uh, Corey Doctor from Boing Boing reports that uh, security research. Uh, he says I found a secret programming uh, uh, backdoors in Chinese microprocessor. So uh, an individual programmer named Sergey Skorobogatov, a postdoc at the security group uh, at the computer lab of the University of Cambridge, was has written up claims mm. that reprogrammable microchips from China contain secret backdoors that can be used to covertly insert code. So uh, claims were made by the intelligence agencies around the world from MI5 to NSA in IAR, IARPA uh, that silicone chips uh, could be infected. Um, so in short, uh, what he's saying is that there's a lot of these backdoors. Uh, he found all these these things, and, and 99% of what I'm hearing of our, micro, our, our chips are coming being manufactured from China is the claim. I don't, I don't think that's entirely true here in this story. Mm, and there's been a, a more sort of like a, a tempered story uh, from this guy's individual blog uh, by uh, mm. a UK newspaper where he's saying, you know, uh, this isn't new. Uh, com- uh, governments do this typically in case these chips go into thermo uh, nuclear bombs or rockets right. or, or other kind of things for override, uh, you know, reasons or this and that. But, uh, but, 
it could is it potentially nefarious as well? Yes, it, it very well could have been. So uh, mm. I think the jury is still out here, but it's very interesting um, type of thing. But uh, everyone shouldn't uh, completely freak out. I've seen some comments here that is you know questions like is this an act of war or not, uh, kind of stuff, and that may may be taking really? a little bit too far, you know. But uh, wow. but who knows? Anyway, yeah, this is the speed round. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, so multimillionaire software exec is arrested in the Lego thieving barcode scam. So this was, I, I tweeted this out with a long ass hashtag said, you gotta crazy. be kidding. Yeah, this is nuts. And, 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 you know, so this dude, I, I mean, from a Palo Alto based software company, you know, basically, you know, redid barcode so he could save money at Walmart <laughs> to get buy Lego cheaply so he could sell it on eBay. And and actually, he's probably he, he's actually one of those what do they call what um, silver silver <laughs> vendors on eBay. Oh. You know, the guys who like really have high rating. Oh you know? really? Wow. But I mean, okay. yeah. Wow. I mean, I can't believe that. So so read about it. We'll have the link to that. This but is it's crazy. It, it's Why doesn't he crazy. just go it's Winona just... Ryder and steal the thing? What, what is, you know? He's like getting I, I, himself. I don't know. Discount. I don't know. How pathetic is that? Yeah, Anyways. yeah. He, he probably he probably used com- uh, the company computers to do uh, yeah, to do pathetic. the scam too. Wouldn't that be cool? cool? He's VP. Can you imagine? Oh, what's your next one, man? LG five inch 1080p uh, oh, HP display yes. uh, HD. Excuse me. Display out does Apple's retina display is what they're claiming. So this is the first ever LG display on Monday announced the world's first full HD LCD smartphone display. Uh, the five inch panel features uh, the highest resolution today and is uh, based on AHIP. Yes, uh, technology. The screen has a whopping 440 pixels per inch and nice. a 1920 nice. by 1080 HD resolution. So your eyeballs won't okay. even probably even can't even deal with this thing. Uh, so, anyways, basically, long story short, this uh, this screen should be uh, uh, available to manufacturers during the second half of this year. So I can't wait to see these new LG nice. phones. Uh, at that point, I've been hearing wow. a lot of buzz about this, and and I have yet to see this sort of thing. So a little excited about that. All right, Greg, what's next? Next. Hey, uh, Comcast launches a new cable box worthy of taking on Roku and uh, Apple Apple TV, uh, oh, I cool. guess. I'm not sure about that. But uh, thanks to uh, Tom Sheridan uh, from VegerBeat. Uh, so Com- Comcast is finally rolling out its new, they call it X1 box. Can you believe X1 box X. versus the Xbox? Come on. The X means <laughs> is that just going to confuse the crap out of us? <laughs> X1 means it's, it's the first. Anyway. anyway uh, you know, they basically updated their crappy UI and play school toy like remote controller uh, on this new uh, uh, upgrade. Um, so it kind of has the you know look and feel to the Comcast Xfinity TV web stuff. Um, so uh, read about that. Um, it's nice to see their you know Comcast finally getting in the game maybe um, since they have all this, uh, these subscribers who have probably been asking this. Um, they also offer uh, an, uh, the uh, iOS uh, remote app as part of the interface, so that's kind of cool too, right? So cool, anyway, okay, what's your next one, man? Uh, mobile web pages are now over one megabyte. This uh, sounds like this Ooh. is bad news, actually. So in the past 18 months, the average web page has grown by 50% from 702 kilobytes in November 2010 to... <laughs> 10,024, 1,042 kilobytes uh, on May 1, 2012. Um, wow. Uh, at this rate, the average page will hit 2 megabytes by 2015 as the projections. Images and third-party scripts like analytics, ads, social sharing buttons are the main culprits here. Um, people ask, well, why is this bad news? Well, mobile users take the hardest hit here. Uh, the consequences include being throttled by providers or being hit with uh, massive roaming charges. For example, earlier this month, the writer bought 25 megabytes of data from his provider for $100 while traveling in Europe. Uh, this works out to $4 per page, people. So uh, developers, think twice out there Whoa. and uh, content creators as well before you start uh, sort of, you know, let's let's try to slim pages down here, uh, apparently, especially for mobile Uh so, yeah. AP launches an entertainment photo venture, uh, basically uh, attacking uh, 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 Getty, uh, which is cool. I like that. Um, so anyway, uh, I saw that uh, from uh, Yuri uh, Kageyama, who's a writer on the, on the Tokyo Beat for AP, and I thank her for that. Um, so, uh, you know, Sony Press has partnered uh, basically to, to go after Getty Images. Hmm. Uh, you know, they have a lot of great images. If you look at a lot of yeah. the AP photographers, yeah. 
tremendous effort, uh, tremendous uh, images. I mean, you, it just, you know, some of the fo- photojournalism that comes out of AP is just incredible if you l- ever looked yeah, at sure. that type of stuff. Yeah. So they just launched the, uh, you know, a new uh, a new venture and basically to basically provide as much of, you know, get some photographers involved and, 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 and license and sell some of the their photojournalism. Social Greg's oh. tip of the week. Oh, it's a Drupler tip of the week. Um, it's uh, basically uh, pay attention to your app permissions. Um, and I want to th- kind of thank, uh, uh, you know, Drupler, uh, who's our kind of a media partner and uh, who's who was at uh, the TechCrunch uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, Disrupt last week. And they'll be here this week for uh, uh, in the Bay Area for Tech Cocktails event. So we might be able to see him this week. But uh, this is from Chris Hoffman of Make Use Of. It's a great tutorial on app permissions and explains some of the ins and outs of uh, of uh, them on uh, definitely different operating systems, iOS and Android. It also suggests an app that actually scans all your permissions so you, you can figure out what they're getting from you. It, it, it's a must read. I, I think we just hit the button because we just want the app, but there's a lot of things to think about before you hit that button. And I'd like you uh, to at least read that article and get, get knowledgeable about the app permissions that you're uh, allowing those apps to get. Cool. So, and what's yours, man? So my tip is uh, uh, an app called uh, GiddyUp, actually. Uh, oh, I think it's a yeah, multi. Like this is both iOS, and Android. Check it out. So it's free, also. So what this does is it's organize. They're asking. So from their site, are you organizing a night out with friends? Can be a hassle, right? Email chains and text messages are chaotic and crucial details lost in the shuffle. The planned sharing tools on the market are typically way too public for our liking, and Facebook response times are just not conductive or conducive for short-term planning. You can uh, send out a giddy up to uh, to a select group of people, and they will immediately know what you want to do, like drinks at a pre-de- predetermined location, date and time, all neatly displayed on their phone. Each invitee will also know who else has been invited and uh, what their RSVP status is, uh, updates in real time. I don't have any plans yet. Send out a giddy up as a question, like drinks tonight. Uh, invite friends such as uh, uh, just like you uh, did on that beautiful Thursday and use that chat feature to get their input and piece together your plans. Once nice. details are finalized, simply update the Giddy Up and an alert will be sent to the group. Giddy Up is unique in that your friends do not need to have the app uh, in order to respond to your invitation. Any phone with an internet connection can receive an, an, an event, uh, see all the details, and RSVP. No sign up is required. Nice. Uh, so for more information, go check out uh, giddyupapp.com. That's G I D D Y U p a p p dot com uh it's free and it looks looks pretty cool i've uh installed it myself and i'm gonna give it a go oh you did yeah cool cool great great let's 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 start a giddy up then yeah. so what's coming <laughs> up man uh sm new tech uh june 6th uh right. at mighty 119 utah street uh, oui, the oui. french are coming we oui, we oui. yes <laughs> we are gonna be there uh nerd soccer and uh b tracks will be there and uh there'll be uh you know six hot startups from france um, you know, coming on shore to show show us uh, big, Silicon Valley SF New Tech <laughs> SF, <laughs> SF Tech people what they could develop. So uh, you know, be there. Tickets are available right now. Anyway, how do um, how do they get a hold of us? I'll yeah. So if you guys want to contribute any stories, please uh, on Twitter go ahead and just post your story and add that little hashtag NRDSDK, and we will definitely consider it for the show. Also, you know, check us out at nerdstalker.com where we post all our stuff. And uh, why don't you just go to iTunes and, and uh, subscribe, do it the easy way, for audio and video. And please give us a five-star rating. That'd be wonderful. Any good high rating um, would be great. And or, you know, if you're, if, you're, if you're a YouTube person, just go to YouTube and do a search for Nerdstalker TV, all one word, Nerdstalker TV, and there we are. So I am Adolfo Ferranda. You can reach me at Adolfo at Nerdstalker.com. If you want to email me or on Twitter, I am at Nerdstalker. How about you, Greg? Um, I'm Greg Valoria. Uh, that's my full name. You can reach me at uh, socialgreg at nerdstalker.com or you can reach me on Twitter at socialgreg. And uh, anyway, uh, you guys be careful out there. Greg, Greg, you froze on me. <laughs>